Hello, I am Gigi Mufu. Welcome to my new home gym. This video is thorough, so I provided time codes in the description below for you guys. I'm gonna start with my training background. I'm a poly athlete, and I've achieved a high level of skill in multiple disciplines such as Taekwondo, acrobatics, flexibility, powerlifting, strongman, various feats of strength, bodybuilding, and I've been training for 22 years. It's how I make my living. I'm now 35, and I just completed my new home gym. But it's not my first home gym experience, and it's not my first experience feeling at home in a gym. I got my first job when I turned 16. I started working at my hometown gym. I worked there for seven years, and it felt like home. I love that place. When my gym closed, I never got that feeling again at any other gym. So I started working out in the next best place, my home, my parents' garage. I got a barbell and some plates and supplemented my training with gymnastics rings training at playgrounds. So I would hang up rings in playgrounds. When I moved into my first apartment, I put up a workout area in the 150 square foot dining room area we had. I made enough viral training videos during that time to boost my follower count. successfully propel my online business, jujumufu.com, into a great money-making venture. I made enough money during that time to quit my day job as a biotech manager, which I worked for seven years, and moved into a rental home with an even bigger space for a bigger home gym. It was great. Much room for activity! Almost the entirety of my income comes from products I sell in my web store, jujumufu.com. I sell the best ammonia-based smelling salts on the planet. I sell a very unique pants product, Gigi Mufu Pants, which are the most flexible pants in the world. There's nothing else like them. Very proud of that product. And I sell training programs and books, which have been super popular, and people have loved them. And I'm always writing more. Business has been good enough to support this investment in this room. So let's talk about this room before we talk about what's in it, because site preparation and building costs amount to well over half the cost of this entire project. This is a 4,000 square foot steel building with 16 foot high walls and a four by 12 roof pitch. The roof pitch increases the total height of the ceiling center to about 24 feet. So I chose this height, not only for aesthetics, but for acoustics because bigger spaces echo less than smaller spaces. Also helping with the acoustics is double wall, sagging bag, R38 insulation. I didn't skip on insulation because not only is it essential for climate control, it also keeps sound from coming in or escaping. Uh, we have two 3.5 ton HVAC units and short spacing in our spiral ducts, so climate control is very good. Oh, we got giant fans too that circulate the air. <laughs> Lighting is important for filming, so we got high bay white lights, 5,000 wavelength, 150 watt. Lights are kind of hard to choose, but we, you know, we got something. <laughs> They're good. And we got four bay doors for options and using natural lighting coming in, as well as transporting uh, large equipment in and out. And the bay doors are good for resale value, for fun, and for filming variety. We do have an upstairs mezzanine, a kitchen, a bathroom, even a laundry closet. Now we're going to start with the equipment I put inside the building. Let's go. You got your barbells, your plates, your racks, and your benches. This is where all the most powerful exercises are done. This is where powerlifting is done. This is where we're going to start. This is where most people need to start. You start with your barbell and your plates. And that's where you started. It is where I started. If you don't have a barbell and some plates, then you need to get, you need to get some barbell and some plates, all right? Because look, after 2020, we all had a hard time trying to find a gym to work out in, but the people with a barbell and some plates, they were just fine. One of my favorite barbells in this rack is this one. Ah, oh, yes, the rusty one. 
I got chill bumps just thinking about this dude. This is the barbell I did my first deadlift on in my life. This is the barbell that I learned how to do everything on. And when my gym closed, they saved my barbell for me. This thing is over 20 years old. I've, I've thrown it off a mountain before. I've lifted underwater with it. I mean, I've done everything with this barbell. Also, I'm a really big fan of the Kabuki barbells. So I have the Duffalo bar, I have their Cadillac bar, I got their power bar, and I have their uh, safety squat bar, oh, which yeah. is called the transformer bar. Yep. And then I have a collection of uh, Texas barbells as well. I got their uh, deadlift bar, their bodybuilding bar, their squat bar, their power bar, I got a six foot curl bar. So this is my barbell set. And you do have some pressing implements down here too. Yes, this is the Viking press from Elite FTS. You got your double handle and you got your single handle Viking press, which you put into a landmine. A landmine, we got two landmines. This is the Adroit landmine from Clevabilt. And this is the best landmine you can get. You can attach it horizontal or vertically to a wall, to a rack, any hole spacing. So with a landmine, you can do a crazy number of exercises. So that is another thing that you want to put on your list if you're a home gym owner. A landmine is good after you get a barbell. Um, what we're kind of standing in here it's is- It's like a cathedral. Yes. So this is the tallest power rack you can buy. I'm gonna try and get it all in the same frame. Good luck. Okay. Yes. So this is the Ghost Strongman Rack. It is 120 inches. The reason it's so tall is, well, it's called the Strongman Rack because look, imagine you got a six foot nine guy standing here. A lot taller. And he's got long arms and he wants to do pin press lockouts with a log. That's Ghost. This is Ghost. That is Ghost. That's Ghost. We have a lot of Ghost in here. We're haunted. We're haunted by Tim and his company, Ghost Strong. He wants to put metal in metal. The more metal metal has, Tim's gonna find a way to put even more metal into it. But we have his combo HD rack, which is both a combination squat rack and bench. One of the best features of this, let's say you got your friend who's working out with you and he's a little shorter. You know, if it's too high for him, he's not gonna be able to rack it. If it's too low for you, that's gonna be really uncomfortable. So what this rack has, it has a built-in jack system here where you can change the height of the rack with a fully loaded barbell on it. Boom. Tim's stuff has these little rollers on all his J cups, it's patented, so it's the only company that does this. So you know how you're like jerking a barbell around trying to get it in place? Just roll it, smooth, even it out. And we also have the competition bench, as well as the mono lift, which is one of my top three favorite things in this gym. This mono lift sold me on Ghost. We used it at the hybrid showdown. When I used this mono, I realized this was the difference between me getting stronger in a squat and me hurting myself. Because the walkout's the hardest part for me in a squat. If, if I don't have to walk it out, I'm very comfortable. It doesn't scare me. And a mono lift means you don't have to walk the squat out. You just stand up with it, you release it, someone squats, and then it comes back in and you just, that's it. This is the best chalk bowl. I'm hanging all my belts on it. Yeah. And you know, just a little rant here. You ever been to a gym and the chalk bowl is almost empty and just has some dead bottles of ammonia in it? I hate that. So this chalk bowl is always gonna have chalk popping out of it. I mean, I, I don't know what else to say about it other than the fact it's just really cool. Right behind the chalk bowl is all of my grip tools. This is my current grip wall. I do sell grip equipment. I'm part owner of Grip Genie. Uh, we sell the best grip equipment and we have a lot of cool stuff hanging on this wall. And I like to do grip training after I do some deadlifts and just kind of, you know, in between things a little bit. Grip training for me nowadays is more like a spice, you know, it's like a little pepper, a little salt, you know, you don't make a meal out of it. You don't uh, do anything like that, but just adding a little bit here and there into a workout, can make it a lot more fun and just, you know, build your forearms up a lot. This is a deadlift platform. It is, uh, it, it was a hundred bucks used. <laughs> Yeah, this is something to hold me over until I get the deadlift platform I really want, which is something I will make myself because I've made my own deadlift platform. I think it's fun. Yeah, it just kind of goes with my philosophy of buy cheap now and save up to get what you really want. Don't shop in the middle. On top of the deadlift platform is Mike Bartos PR platform, which is one of the coolest things. It's got all these different band settings here um, for reverse banding, banding. It's got pins. It's got uh, setting here for distraction deadlifts. It's just, it does all sorts of things. And it's also a uh... J 
gym crashed up coffee table. <laughs> a gym coffee table covered in chalk. A massage table. Ah! You have a cleaver belt again? Correct. I've been on a couple podcasts before and it's kind of a joke, but it's I'm not really joking. I'm serious when I say this. You only have $100 to spend on gym equipment. I would recommend you buy a deadlift jack. Which is funny because you can't really do anything with it by itself, but I'm serious. Like, you need a deadlift jack. They are one of the greatest things to have as a home gym owner. And Steve Cleva from Cleva Built makes the best deadlift jacks. I wish this was around when I was uh, working out at gyms because I had like this pipe thing I made I one remember time. the duct tape and the pipe. It cost more to make that almost than it was to just get one of these. We are standing right next to some really powerful exercises. Yes. We've got your glute hand bench, GHD, glute hand developer, a 45 degree back raise. So. Yes, I see. These are from Elite FTS. In my other gym that I've been using for the past few years before we upgraded to this, one of the only pieces of leg equipment I had in the room was a GHD. And it really helped me out. It's good for athletics, it's good for powerlifting, it's good for building legs. They're amazing pieces of equipment and there's a reason why you see glute ham raises and hyperextensions in so many programs. It's because those exercises are just incredible. This is the most expensive gym table uh, you can buy. <laughs> It's, it's, a, it's a reverse hyper from West Side. This is their uh, uh, dual pendulum reverse hyper. The thing I really like about this one is you can change the angle yes. of the top. So that is gonna be more glute focused. This is gonna be more back focused. And that setting is where you're gonna have a bunch of drink rings appear for people putting their drinks Tables on the Yes, you have your post-workout cream of rice, protein, your coffee mug, your rain energy drink, your ammonia, your rolled up knee wrap, your unrolled knee wrap hanging off uh, one of these hooks over here. You got a shirt hanging on this one. You got your phone here, you got your friend's phone here. So this is the power section of the gym. Again, this is where I would start for you. So start with your barbell, your plates, get a stand or a power cage, rack, bench, Get those things, put them in a small place. Like a dining house. room. Like a dining room, like my dining room apartment gym, um, which was awesome and amazing. The next area we're gonna talk about is this big open area right here. This, yeah. It's, uh, this space. It's this. like the area 51 of the gym. All right, we're in area 51 of the gym. This is my 20 by 20 foot plyo floor. A plyo floor is plywood with springs on the bottom of it, very tight springs. It's used for gymnastics floor routines and cheerleading. Plow floors are useful for a lot of other things though, and that's why I got one. You can use it for flips, you can use it for stretching, you can use it for running around, rolling around, you can use it for foam rolling, body tempering, and just, it's good for movement, man. You can just, oh, man. is my favorite thing in this gym. I've always wanted one ever since I was a kid, but I didn't have a space to put it, you know? Like, you need a lot of space for a plow floor. A lot of space. You need a lot of space. The plow floor, the entire thing was less than $5,000. And I got mine from glorianpower.com. It's a really good website. They're great people, really clean delivery, really clean install. We installed it in less than an hour with a couple friends. Sam, what do you think of the plow floor? It's great. It's a great place to stretch both before and after sessions. Mm -hmm. And I, I catch her sometimes laying around on her phone after a workout because it's just comfortable. It's nice just to sit on it. I mean, even if you're not doing flips and gymnastics and stuff, just having open space is good. And you want to make the space nice and comfortable and inviting. And so it's that, clean. And it's clean, yes. You don't have to get a whole plow for it. Um, they, they come in like five by five sheets. So if you're to open this dude up, yeah, it's just, you can see the sheets underneath. Yep. It's pretty dark under there. You can get as many sheets as you want and just roll carpet on top. So even if you just wanted a space just to practice a standing back flip or, for, or some simple stretches, you know, you can get a small area. So plow floors are great. And I'm so happy I finally got one. It was a childhood dream come true. So let's move on to the next section. Yes. So we're going to be progressing to the bodybuilding equipment now. Hey John, where are you? I'm over here. Over here? Yeah. 
Now we're in the south side of the gym where we start our bodybuilding area tour. So we're gonna start with the dumbbells because those are very important. In yes. Every gym. And we have the rogue urethane round dumbbells. They go up to 150 pounds. Boom. And we have on wall installed mirrors right over here with a low ceiling and the special lights that are dimmable for some really good hat and heavy lighting type stuff going on. As you can see, we also have uh, several sets of these rolling mirrors, which are really, really, really cool. All right, they're really, really, really light. They're like super light. Poke it, does this thing. And you roll them all over the room so that you see yourself anywhere in the gym at any time doing anything you want. So it's really important for bodybuilding to get feedback on the way you look. And it's just motivating to look at yourself as you're getting like a huge pump. So let's go through all the equipment now. This is a decline dumbbell rack with pivots. Uh, it's really hard to get into uh, a decline dumbbell press with heavy weights. So the pivots just kind of, they're, it's almost like a monolith for dumbbells. You just lift them up and they fall back. They also make it for shoulder pressing. So one of the hardest parts about heavy seated shoulder pressing is getting the dumbbells up into your arms and these things or just a dream. All right, so black and gold. Black and gold is the color scheme that I went with for this gym. How did I get black and gold? Because the company that I bought the most pieces of equipment from, Panada, is an Italian strength equipment company, and they are awesome. And the rep from the company I work with really closely, Francisco, uh, he said that they can put any upholstery and color lever arms combos that I wanted to. He sent me a picture of a piece of equipment with black and gold, I was like, that. I want that. And that was the first thing he that sent you. That was the you. first thing he sent me. I was like, he was like, hold on, hold on, I got more. No, 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 no. I want the gold and black one. He's like, well, okay, then. I guess it's gold and black. And that's how, that's actually how, I, this wasn't like something I've been thinking of for a long time. It's just the gold and black happened because the dude just nailed it on the first try. So this is the most comfortable upholstery uh, on any gym equipment, but they also have some of the best strength curves out of any pieces of equipment I've ever used. And I got to try a lot of this equipment and pure muscle and fitness in Canada, Dorian Hamilton's gym. I have to thank Dorian so much for networking me with some of these companies and uh, giving me recommendations because the guy has some really, really good tastes and those are reflected in his uh, gym equipment choices in his gym. But let's go start right here with the chest machines. We have a super inclined bench press. We have an incline chest press. Yes. And we have a decline chest press. So these are three chest press lever machines. And the reason I got so many different ones is because barbell bench press has always been a really crappy exercise for building chest for me. It's always kind of aggravated my shoulders. I think a lot of people experience the same thing. But lever presses have always helped me stimulate and really grow my chest. So I have bad chest genetics. If I don't work out my chest, it shrinks super fast. And unless I do exactly the right exercises, it just doesn't respond. But I found that the lever press exercises are something that I really need in order to get a good chest workout. And so I got as many different angles as possible. Um, behind me is a curling machine. Yes. Everyone needs an arm machine if they're gonna have a bunch of machines. So I got a curling machine. Uh, I can tell you that this is it's really nice. It feels good. And yeah, it's, it's just curls. <laughs> So behind it, I also, I kind of took a, a gamble on this one. This is a deltoid press, the circular one. I wanted a shoulder exercise that was a pressing variation that was a quick load. I wanted something that had a uh, selectorized stack on it because most of the pressing exercises are plate loaded. I wanted something convenient. We have another chest machine here. This is the most unique Smith machine. Um, looks like a little tank. It does. It looks like this little pyramid tank thing. And it is a decline and flat dual Smith system from Panada. And it's just really cool. So and you can, it. it's bilateral as well as unilateral. Yes, it's bilateral as well as unilateral. That's why it's a dual system. This is one of my favorite pieces in the gym. This, this definitely makes it top five. Uh, I do it every shoulder day. The standing multi-flight. Yeah, it's got a lot of settings, and I can tell you, a lot of the machines have settings that I have to write down because I don't remember them, but this one, I know the settings because I use it so much. I use this one maybe uh, once every five days. What do you say, Sam? That, or maybe even a little more frequently than yeah, that. Yeah, I love this one. It is both a shoulder lateral raise and chest fly combo. It's super convenient. It's got a low profile, and it's got, it's got a really nice feel. This is one of my favorite things in this room. A hammer strength pet deck and rear deltoid. So this was actually in my barn gym. So I've had this one for a while. 
An oldie but a goodie. It's an oldie but a goodie. I've had a lot of good workouts on this. Cleaned it up, still looks good. Okay, so we're, we're kind of like this, this line right here. So line. as you notice, pretty much everything over here is upper body. Yes. So we're gonna finish upper body with some back exercises. We have a rowing machine here from Panada. We have a high row machine from Panada right here, which is my favorite back machine in this room. And my friends that have used it have agreed with me. This one just has a super good feel. And then we have a super rowing machine right here from Panada. So we got three rowing machines from Panada. We got three chest machines, including a Smith press, so that's four, an arm machine, deltoid, selectorized, shoulders. We're good. Upper body is good, but that's not all. We also got a couple really cool pieces from Atlantis that I just had to have. So this is an incline tricep pushdown. It's one of my favorite adaptations of a tricep pushdown exercise. I used to always like to throw the incline bench next to a pulley stack in the gym and do some uh, you know, tricep pushdowns, but this is just built in. It's just already ready to go and super convenient. That's why I got it. We also have one on the other side of it that is a horizontal pulley bicep curl from Atlantis. So I got the, you know, Selectorized bicep and selectorized tricep push down over there from Atlanta. So this is a really cool pair of machines I got right here. And then we also have one more machine. It's right behind you, Sam. Let's look at it. This is kind of like the black sheep of the gym. So it is a rear delt fly machine. It, rear delt is part of the back. It's also part of the delt. If you neglect your rear delts, your delts will not look as big as they can be. Rear delts protect you from injury. They make your shoulder look big. They're the one of the most important parts of the shoulder to train. So that's why I got a rear delt machine over here as well. And next to it is the Panada adjustable. Oh my gosh! Wasn't that so cool? Look, so cool. it's gas assisted. Now watch this. Wow. Try it again. Oh, okay. Boom! Spider curls right here. This upholstery, as I mentioned, is super comfortable. And since the preacher curl is something that everyone really likes to use in the gym, it is the best way to build biceps. Dude, like this preacher curl is so good. I give it 11 out of 10. And I never give anything more than 10 out of 10 because it just seems stupid to give something more than 10 out of 10. But this preacher curl is one of my favorite things in the gym. I'm gonna say that a lot because I love a lot of things in here, but this preacher curl bench it is just way beyond other preacher curl benches that I've used. And now we're gonna, you're kind of standing in between the biggest thing in the gym. Uh, yes, yes, uh, you, let me, I don't you know like, if I can... uh, go way, way back over there so you can like see it in its entirety. All right, let's uh, talk about this. All right, so this is a dual tower cable stack from Elite FTX. It took Will and Ronnie over nine hours to build it, which we documented on a time lapse. You're getting closer, so not to yell as loud. I figured I was only, <laughs> only gonna purchase a big cable stack once in my life. I might as well get the one I wanted, and this is it, you know? You know, it, well, what, what else can I say about it? You got your low rows, you got your lap pull downs, you got your in between. You got it all in spades. Well, aside from the giant cable stack that the FTS makes, they seem to make a lot of the biggest things. They also have the largest. Uh, cable attachment rack that you can buy from a strength equipment company. I saw this in their gym and I had to have it. Um, I, I had a lot of the cable attachments and this thing isn't even near max capacity yet. So this is right next to the cable station over here. Well, wait, what about this arm wrestling table? And we have an arm wrestling table because the best arm wrestling exercises in my opinion, if you look at all the top arm wrestlers, they usually use cable systems and an arm wrestling table right next to it. Well, with this cable uh, monstrosity I have over here, I have no problem uh, sliding an arm wrestling table next to it and getting a, a gigantic forearm pump. This is an arm bet arm wrestling table from Devin Larrick, so it is good. I like it. And thank you, Devin. Thanks, Devin, for the arm wrestling table. We're gonna move on to the leg part of the gym, which is all the leg machines are clustered in the middle. So we're gonna start with the leg press and the hack squat. This is the largest leg press in the world and the largest hack squat in the world. And the video we just released last week, we had these delivered, we used them. In the middle of the gym, we have all the leg machines and we have a row of leg machines going this way. So let me talk about my history of leg training. Uh, historically, I did not isolate my legs with bodybuilding methodology because I was more interested in having fast kicks flips and having giant logs of legs to wield around the air was a lot harder than having a larger upper body and moving that around the air. And leg day would toast me for the rest of the week often, so it would make you know, acrobatic training hard to program. You know, up until about a year and a half ago, I didn't do any direct bodybuilding work for legs, but when I started doing that, because I'm entering a bodybuilding show soon, 
I need leg isolation work. But also bodybuilders, I'm gonna have a lot of bodybuilders come in here and they're super picky with their leg exercises. So bodybuilder bait? Bodybuilder bait. We got bodybuilder bait in this gym. So we got a squat machine from Panada, which I love. I mean, I do this thing for cardio in the morning sometimes. I'll just do like sets of 20 with a lighter weight. This is a calf hack machine. You do your calves on it and it's kind of like a hack squat in a way. This is the vertical leg press machine. Oh yes, I like this one. Yeah, this vertical leg press has a million adjustments. It is one of the most uh, complicated machines in this gym. Right here we have Atlantis Pendulum Squat, which is famous. Well, it's, it's one probably, of John Meadows' favorites, yeah? It's one of John Meadows' favorites. I think he really popularized it. So actually, I texted John Meadows, I was like, hey, uh, I'm getting some Atlantis equipment, what are your favorite pieces? And all he responded with was, get a pendulum squat. <laughs> It's my favorite. It's like, okay, one piece is all he had to say. Traffic here. There's aisles. Traffic here. Yeah, we tried to keep some aisles. We did the best we could. I think we had a really good layout in this room. And then right behind it is another piece by Atlantis. This is their calf press. Yes. And this is a really weird one because it's like a seated calf raise, but instead of the uh, this moving up and down, it's your feet are pressing it down and it's coming back up. And then right behind it, we have the traditional seated calf raise, which is my favorite calf exercise, is a seated calf raise. I think it's just an easy way to get in and get out from calf training. And also it's got a uh, the shin training as well for the tibialis muscles, which is great for athletics. And then this, set, this, is, uh, this is Sam's machine. This is one of your machines? <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah, this is, this is your fault. I love it though. I think it's great. This is a uh, hip thrust machine from Panada. It's got a really good feel. It's easy to get in and out of. It's like a roller coaster coming down. And then we have a power squat over here. Okay. So this is another squat emulation machine. Now we're gonna get into hamstrings. And the thing about hamstrings is there's a lot of different hamstring machines. <laughs> I mean, there's only like one quad extension machine, right? You got a quad extension. But hamstrings, there's so many different types of hamstring machines. So I got the kneeling leg curl, which is really cool because you stick your knee in it and then you curl with one leg at a time. And then when you want to do the other side, you just move this over here. And it's plate loaded. And it's plate loaded. Then we have two prone leg curls, the ones where you lie facing down. We got one with weight and you got one with the selectorized stack over here. Mm -hmm. Now you, you might ask like, why did you get both? It's because, uh, when, okay, imagine this. You're doing bicep curls on a cable stack, all right? Now you get an easy curl bar, you load up a couple of 25s on each side, and now you're doing bicep curls with a barbell and some weight. If you've done that, you will agree with me that they feel different. It's the same here. We also have a seated leg curl here, which is uh, you know, this is probably my favorite hamstring machine out of these four that I'm talking about. Yeah, I see you crawling out of this thing all the time. Yeah, it just burns, man. Like, it just burns. It hurts. And uh, it reminds me of like when you're sitting on a recliner couch and you have to like get up and you've been sitting there for a while and you gotta do like the leg curl thing. Yeah, it's training you for that. So that when you're really, really tired at the end of the night and you've been sitting there watching TV with your, with your bestie, then you can just like curl your way out of that reclining couch and get on with your... That's some highly specialized training. And so is this, this is very highly specialized right here, Sam. This is one of your machines as well. It's called the Master Gluteus. Yeah, so it's a, it's a butt blaster, basically. Uh, this one's from <laughs> Panada, and you do this. I see. And look at this crazy angle you can get on this one. You, you can change the angle a bunch of different ways. Look at this. Holy crap. <laughs> and this is probably the leg machine I actually use the most right here. This is just a, a quad extension from, from Panada. And it's just a really good quad extension. So. I, I feel like this collection may never. It's not really done, is it? I, mean, I don't know, Sam. Real. I think it's pretty done. <laughs> For I now. I think it's pretty done. You, know, you get on some of this Panada equipment, you're like, okay, yeah, you're good. You don't need anything better than that because there's nothing better than that. All right, guys, check back in about six months. Let's see where. <laughs> Where's it going to go? We don't have anywhere to put it. John, you were like, I want to. I want it to be so I can't walk through here without hitting my shins. I can't walk through here without hitting my shins already. Well, we do have an aisle. You're right. We could just throw some stuff up here. Throw this in the middle of this aisle right here. Got it. 
There. Can't well, now use... Now I this space, so I can put something here. There you go. Yeah, you know? Another well, back machine? Another back machine. Or a leg machine? Hot tub? Well, hot tub would go in the back, which is actually really good, because now we're gonna talk about, like, what is everything else in this room? Because we haven't shown you the kitchen, and the bathroom, and the back patio, and, oh, we gotta cover the cardio floor. Let's do that super fast real quick. All right, let's go check out the cardio mezzanine. We have an upstairs. All right, we got a treadmill, we got a Stairmaster, we got a Precore AMT, which is basically the super elliptical machine. We got assault bikes from Schwinn, and we got a Concept2 rowing machine. Great, let's go to the kitchen. Let's go. And the gym has a kitchen. The only thing this kitchen doesn't have that an ordinary kitchen has is a stove top. So we're not gonna be sauteing any vegetables or cooking any cast iron meat here, but we can do everything else. I mean, the microwave is also an air fryer and an oven. It's pretty badass, I didn't even know microwaves can do that now. Right over here, oh hi. Who's here? Jim Cat. Oh, Jim Cat. Oh. Jim Cat's still here. Uh, he came to our old gym and our other house that we were renting. And when we moved to this house, which we own, and built this building, he's been doing a great job of keeping bad guys out of the gym. So he's been doing good. Jim Cat's still around. Right here we had a 220 volt put in and a water line. Uh, the 220 volt was, um, <laughs> it's, you know, it's for a ridiculous future purchase of a commercial coffee maker, but uh, it didn't fit into the budget. And so we repurposed the water line that we had over here for that as a pot filler, which is really cool because it makes filling up coffee machines easier. So that's, that's pretty neat. And that's the kitchen over here. We have a rain fridge. So yes. Yeah, I am a rain athlete and they've been a great team to be on. They're really cool people, They've helped me out a lot. And they outfit this gym with this cool ass fridge and I get all the rain I want. So it's delicious. I am standing on the only part of the gym that has rubber flooring. This is one eighth inch rubber flooring with golden gray speckle. And the thing is that I got a lot of questions about flooring because a lot of people were concerned I didn't put rubber flooring throughout the whole gym. But here's the thing, I'm rubber flooring in the area where the dumbbells are. There is value in that because the dumbbells are dropping the ground. But everything else in the gym is a machine. So there's no weights dropping. Deadlift platform, the weights are dropping on that. And the monolift and the squat rack and the power rack, all those things have safeties on them. So there's no reason to drop weights anywhere but over here in the dumbbell area for the most part. In here, we have a bathroom. Wow, that looks like a bathroom. <laughs> I mean, did you, did you see it? I have a urinal. Oh, urinal's dirty. One of the highlights of this entire project was going to the website to buy a urinal and buy a urinal. <laughs> I was just like, shopping for a urinal. So, so cool. And they're auto flush too. And over here we have a laundry closet. So we have a washer and dryer put in. And really here's the thing with this, okay? So buy once, cry once. So when you're building a building, you gotta remember that because if I wanted to put a 220 volt outlet here later or have a closet that was spec the size for a laundry machine later, you would have required tearing out walls, lots of extra costs. So when you're building a building, I mean, I put, a, there's electrical outlets, just an absolutely insane amount of electrical outlets. Yes, in you this will building. not see them because they're everywhere. They're covered by all sorts of things, but yes. look, if you wanted to add an electrical outlet later, well, good luck. You're going to have to tear out the wall and the electrician's going to be laughing at you. Get that stuff done when you're building the building. I had that mindset with a lot of the things in this room was to, well, get it done now. So. Like the audio, right? like the audio because the audio speakers that are mounted on the wall were wired by the electricians and those wires go throughout the entire building and if i hadn't done it while we were building well you know so he is using your plyo floor to clean himself that's not a bath it's a plyo floor what are you doing it sounds really good in here. It's controlled here as well as an app on my phone. Over here I also have the security system and the TV with Ronnie Coleman. It's a Ronnie Coleman TV. It's the only thing it plays. Right. <laughs> a TV dedicated to Mr. Coleman.
I mean, he's the best. He's the greatest bodybuilder of all time. You want to watch Ronnie Coleman? Oh, you want to watch Ronnie Coleman? Okay, let's go outside. He wants to go outside. Okay. Oh, yeah. Good job. And this is our back patio area. We had a brick patio with a sit-around fire pit built back here. Let's, just... let's look around. So we saved, we've budgeted, we've planned, and we've built it. We've actualized this dream of ours. Yeah, it took a lot longer than I thought it was going to take. Yeah, I mean, too. you know, things don't go to plan, no. but you got to pivot. No, you gotta, you got to adapt because <laughs> life happens, right? Yeah. So, man. but we still made it happen. Yes, it's done. It's. The experience of building this for me has been like, you're running a race, and every time you get to the finishing line, it gets pushed back a little bit further. So right as you're about to cross the finish line, it gets pushed back further. And that's how I felt since uh, last year. <laughs> this is the feeling that, uh, this is the overarching feeling of my existence since last year, is this finishing line just keeps being pushed A hamster back. wheel. It is a hamster wheel. And it's just from my own experience, it's from the pandemic, delaying structural materials and other things like that and contractors who overpromise timelines to get your business I mean all these things just combine just create something that just takes a lot longer than you thought it would take and you know you got to be in control of your expectations and that was hard for me because I wanted to be done in January I thought it was gonna be done in January and it's June right now it's actually July is it July it's July right now. it's nearly July it's nearly July right now so But this is the best home gym in the world. It is so cool. Look, this, this gym is a crossing of different aspects of physical culture that don't go together usually. So it's very unique. It's just creative. The attention to detail is amazing. I mean, it's just... It's a reflection of you. It is. And, you know, the feeling I get in this room, this, I didn't know this, but... I have a feeling now when I'm here that I used to have that I lost a long time ago and I have that feeling in this room right now. It's the feeling of being at home in a gym. Now I know I've had home gyms and things like that and you know I felt at home in gyms but this is different. This is, this is that feeling again only even bigger. It's, this is a gym. This isn't a home gym. This is a gym with a home in it. It's a gym home. This is my gym home. I think that's the name of the gym. Gym home. Home sweet home. It's good. You know, I mean, we, we got it to the point where now we can have our friends over. We can have great people come here and create great videos and great memories and just have great times. And, you know, we couldn't have done this without the help of, you know, your mom, Sam. I mean, mm -hmm. she was... She, your, Sam's mom lived with us in our house for six months while this thing was being built. She was helping with the contractors, helping with the timelines, do, an insane attention to detail. I mean, she killed it, man. She's, she's also the fork, fork truck driver. <laughs> <laughs> the fork truck driver is what she's known for. But uh, she killed it. And, you know, we have a great social circle, great team. The businesses that we've worked with are great. Everyone helped us out so much. And we want to thank you guys. You know, we're building a community. We want uh, just good things, you know. We just want good things. And this is, uh, you know, this is, this is a result of a lot of people's hard work and contributions. Contributions. And I just feel really lucky. And it's amazing. I'm so happy. So happy. We're both very grateful. We're both very grateful. Thank you guys so much. So we're excited.